And we are live. We are live. Okay, we will take a few minutes here just to let others get on, those who said they were coming on. Mm -hmm. Good morning. We are Jeff and Jaron Thompson of Woodland Park, Colorado. One of the most beautiful places on the planet, I might add. Yes, aspens are turning. Yeah. Leaves are falling. Oh gosh, yes. It's beautiful. Beautiful golden color everywhere, along with the gorgeous greens and mountaintops that are here. Jerry and I are both very blessed and honored to live here in this place. Mm -hmm. uh, not only is it one of the most beautiful spots on the, on the planet that we've been to, but also it's just peaceful here. It is peaceful. Living it, I loving so. it. Everything is good. I uh, don't think that we have any business to talk about other than it's we're still in the middle of conference season. Do we want to let them know what we're toying around with, with the idea of creating some teachings? Oh, uh, go ahead. So one of the ideas that, that we're playing around with is to create some teachings that people can consume um, off our website or off YouTube for free. Um, but we are just laying before the Lord, like what is, what are topics people want to hear about? What do people want to be encouraged in? How do people want to be discipled? Where are people at in their walks and in their lives? So if you have any input in that, please put them in the comments. We would love yeah. just to hear where individuals are at um of course we always ask god and we hear from god but yet at the same time mm -hmm. we always want to ask so. yeah and uh shoot us a message on messenger mm -hmm. facebook whatever it, those of you who have, know how to find us you know how to find us jeff and Jaren dot com. yeah or jeff and Jaren outlook dot com. yep either way yeah all things jeff and Jaren. okay here we go our message today or what we're what the lord's placed on our heart is let me see what you're saying and there, God's going to use whatever means possible to communicate with us. If we're born again, we have his spirit, we have his voice, we have his word. And the key is being able to perceive and keep in balance everything. And there's so many ways that, that the Lord speaks to us. Our scripture references Psalm 86, verses 16 through 17. David says, turn to me and be gracious to me. Give your strength to your servant and save the son of your maidservant. Show me a sign of your favor and that those who hate me may see and be put to shame because you, Lord, have helped me and comforted me. Next is Joel chapter 2, verse, and this is just verses 32 and 30 through 32. And I highly recommend reading the entire second chapter of Joel because the whole thing is an encouragement of where we're mm -hmm. at, where we're headed. Uh, but the Lord says, I will show wonders in the heavens and on the earth, blood and fire and columns of smoke. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the great and awesome day of the Lord comes. And it shall come to pass that everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Prior to that, and most people see this, and it is, it's, it's the coming of the great and terrible day of the Lord when Jesus returns. But the Lord also gives some seriously good promises in there. So again, I highly recommend reading it because I believe we are there right now. Next is Matthew chapter 13, verses 10 through 13. Uh, Jesus is talking to the disciples, and just prior to this, he gives the parable of the sower. Again, this old chapter can be taught, and, and just you walk away just excited. But the Lord says, To you has been given to know the secrets of heaven, talking about his own. But to them, those who don't have ears to hear, to them it has not been given. For to the one who has, more will be given, and he will have an abundance. But from the one who has not, mm -hmm. even what he has will be taken away. This is why I speak to them in parables, because seeing they do not see, and hearing they do not hear, nor do they understand. The Lord was specifically speaking about the religious leaders of the day. I'm going to leave that at that. So... Again, the Bible's full of signs and references to signs, and we all love a good sign every now and again. Now, oh, thank you, David. Thank you for being with us today. Uh, some, of the good, some of the best examples we have of signs in the heavens and the earth are we have the rainbow, which the Lord promises that he would never flood the earth again. This is in Genesis 9. Uh, symbolism of the seven-day week. God worked for six days, and then he rested on the seventh. That's from Genesis 2. Mm -hmm. The stars, the winds, everything around us, the rising of the sun, the setting of the same. This is Genesis 1.14. The Lord said, let 
the Lord, the Lord himself said, let there be signs in the heaven and the earth to, to guide man. So the word sign, and I found this really interesting in, when we were putting this together, the word sign, especially in, in New Testament, uh, when the Lord said, when the Lord Jesus said sign, uh, in our modern English, it comes from the Greek word, and I hope I'm saying this right, semion, semion, or okay, I'll leave it. <laughs> Which, which can, and this is really cool, which can refer to a court's official notice of a final verdict, a signature, or a seal on a document. That means it is official. It is an official seal or declaration that is binding and non-negotiable. Its conditions must be met legally, and that's what Jesus meant when he said in Matthew 16, go into all the world and proclaim the gospel to the whole creation. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. Love you too, Kendall. And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name, these signs, these sealed documents, these are binding non-negotiables. In my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak in new tongues. They will pick up serpents with their hands. And if they drink any deadly poison, it will not hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. That, boys and girls, we could walk away right now Amen. and just be so happy with it. And so one of the things that happened to me a few years ago was that God had put Mark 16 on my heart. <clears throat> and he just had me quoting Mark 16. He had me write it on my bathroom mirror. And it was just one of those things. I'm like, you know, this is such a cool verse. But Jeff and I were actually painting the exterior of a house together. And when we were painting the house... Jeff had told me, he said, Jaron, when you get between the bushes and the house, he said, please watch out for snakes. Watch out for snakes. And, um, and so as, I mean, I was trying to cut in the bottom portion of this house. And so my face was in the leaves and, you know, sitting and standing and bending and crouching and all of those positions. And then um, I felt something move under me. And so I got up and it was um, some baby copperheads were nesting right there. And so I got up and like any good girl does, ran around the house screaming. And, but I just, <laughs> but I just started screaming, Mark 16, Mark 16. Um, and Jeff just looked at me and said, what? And so I showed him what was going on and calmed down and explained to him. But it was one of those moments of God going, my word does not return void. Mm -hmm. and, um, and you can pick up any deadly thing and it will not harm you. Not out of, Hey, look what the Lord can do, but Where's look at what the Lord is doing <laughs> in your life. He is ever present. He is yeah. ever there. There are signs around you. Just don't get goofy with them. It's yeah. like the Lord said, stand on this. And then it, there came a time I needed to stand on it. But it was because of all of the, um, all of the seed and the word planted in my yeah. heart, the confession of his word being true that created the sign, right. that created the outcome that I needed right. at that time. And it was a prophetic forewarning that that we didn't realize, and we'll get into that in a second. Okay, so thank you for sharing that. You're welcome. As with anything, we do need to keep a balance of, of seeing our markers and discerning them. Uh, Jesus said in Matthew 16, an evil and adulterous generation looks for a sign. and pe But people use that as an excuse to not pay attention. You know, when, hi Christopher, thank you for, for joining us this morning blessings to Wales and but the Lord was was saying this to a group of people that said well show us a sign that you're the Messiah so mm -hmm. the Lord just said he just called him out you're looking for a sign but people use that 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 how do I say it oh thank you Festo and but people use that as an excuse to not pay attention to what the Lord is showing them because well Jesus said an adulterous generation looks for a sign but when he said this, uh, God's own at that time had gotten so used to looking for directions from other avenues because they didn't have the written Bible. They had the Torah, the law and the prophets, which, oh yeah, we still live there today. But they were looking, they were always looking for, for, for him. They were always looking for the signs from heaven. And, but they'd gotten so used to that that they couldn't see that God himself in the form of Jesus was trying to speak them to trying to speak to them directly. I'm getting in a hurry, or they see everything as a sign, and especially those of us in the prophetic and Pentecostal circles. Uh, one of our instructors in Bible college, Brian Nutman, made the statement. 
Be careful of prophetic people because everything to them is a sign. How can he say that? He said, I'm married to one. <laughs> and so, love you, Brian and Sue. Uh, but with all that we do, and I mean this with everything we do in our walk with the Lord, the key is to discern, discern, and discern. Not everything is a sign from heaven. And, and this is, although the earthly design is from heaven, but if we think something in the natural is speaking to us concerning something, all we have to do is ask the Lord. He'll Amen. show us. Uh, and if it moves your heart, it is from God. So pay attention to these things. But it's also balanced with you're serving the one who gave you the promise versus serving the promise. Right. And I'm going to give some personal examples here so we'll be vulnerable. <laughs> <laughs> but a few, a few weeks ago, a few weeks ago, the Lord had spoke to me, and he, and he said, and it still moves me just to even say it, I, I am coming to visit you and Jaren. I'm coming to visit you. And so, okay, uh, you'd said this to us when we first moved back to Oklahoma, and, and so, and a lot of people bore witness to that, and we got to share that word, and it was hallelujah for it. Uh, but I was seeking him specifically on some things, and he just said, I'm, I'm going to come visit you and Jaren. And that was about the time the breakthrough came. Uh, we were having a conference and a breakthrough came for me personally of being able to discern fear, to be able to discern uh, pain and, and discomfort and all those things that go with that. That come with people that are coming that to see came, That came from the groups coming mm -hmm. and being able to pick up on that and being able to stand in the gap. And Jaron and I and a few others were able to stand in the gap and, and I'm not saying that our prayers did it. Morning, little sister. I'm not saying our prayers did it, but our prayers were part of it. We, we stood in obedience, and we watched God move in this thing. Mm -hmm. We watched yeah. so many healings take place. Uh, but anyway, when the Lord had spoke to you, he was coming to visit us, I was seeing a lot of things, a lot of things around us, which living up here up in the mountains, you, you do get to see some fun things. Uh, and again, uh, I don't, I don't discount the natural elements. It's just, wasn't that nice? But always, but always seek discernment. Uh, I seen, I'd, when the Lord spoke that, I'd seen a golden eagle here on property. And golden eagles are not common to the mountains. If you see one, pay attention because occasionally you'll see bald eagles come through on, during migration. But a golden eagle, they live about 2,000 feet below us. And so I seen one and I asked the Lord, is this a sign? He said, it is. Of what? Well, I'll show you. Okay. And, and, he, and, he, and he is. But then at the same time, uh, the cloud formations. And we do get a lot of unusual, unusual cloud formations here living at the base of Pikes Peak. But at, during this particular week, seeing, seeing almost all I could think, all that could come to mind was a cloud by day and mm -hmm. the fire by night. And, and to have clouds stay above you, stay above your region, above your area, and every other cloud around them is moving except that one, and it stays there all day. Okay, you got my attention. Uh, and then there were other cloud formations up on, up on the mountain itself that there's no other cloud in the sky, but yet it's as though the Spirit of the Lord is hovering at the summit of that mountain. Mm -hmm. And I'll say this again publicly, that the Lord is bringing people to the Pikes Peak yes. region by the hundreds. Why? Well, I can tell you two things, because Pikes Peak is considered America's mountain, and we are literally in the heartbeat of America. Mm -hmm. And so that being said, uh, we, we, we watch this, and the Lord has spoken to not only us about it, but several others. Good morning, Heather. Good morning, Hooks. Uh, but during the migration period a few weeks, a couple of weeks ago. Um, we, ha I mean, we have a lot of, a lot of animals coming through, a lot of birds and such. I saw a bear yesterday. Yeah. It was great. <laughs> yeah. We have, we have got to see a lot of bears this year, which is fun. But, uh, I seen, seen doves this year and you never see doves at this elevation, but to see them and to, to see the, not only hawks, but the numbers of them. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just, wow. But, there in one part of my job, I have a place where you know I have to be at, and and having one land on land on a sign in front of you and just stare you down, 
And this happened a few times. All right, Lord, you're, you're talking to me about something. So, okay, well, let's look up and see what, what a hawk's all about. Uh, they're unclean for food, according to the law, law of Moses. And, but a hawk generally represents speed, discernment. He's a protector. He's a messenger. Uh, there's a lot, lot more things to that, New Age, Native American. Uh, but, but again, just paying attention to it. But their main characteristics are their, their power, their strength, and their grace. Uh, and I'm telling you, God will use his creation to do his bidding. Mm -hmm. If he can speak to the donkey, he's going yeah. to speak to us in other ways. Uh, a few weeks ago when you and I went up on top of the mountain, and I like to walk ahead of Jaron, okay? I'm Just, slower. Well, <laughs> when, you're, when you're up above Timberline, okay, we all do it at a different pace. But uh, rock marmots are up there above Timberline, and they're big, cute, furry, little Kind of look like beaver-ish yeah. animals. Yeah, but they love people. And if, 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 there we go. Uh, but they love people, and, and if they see people, they'll come running to people, not necessarily looking for something to eat because you can't, you can't feed them things. Uh, their diet is very restricted to what's above Timberline. But they'll come running, and they'll walk with you, and they'll stay with you, and it's really odd. But I got way ahead of Jaron, and I didn't realize that Jaron was needing a, a rest time. And I kept hearing one barking, and I finally turned around and I said, what are you barking at? And he turned around and was and doing his tail like this, as if to say, come here, come here, Jaron needs help. So I dropped down where I could find her, where I could see her, and sure enough, Jaron just said, I need rest, man. <laughs> and so give it up for the little rock marmot. But then I read a story this week that did my heart good. It's sad, but it, again, it did my heart good. Uh, over in India, there was uh, somebody who tried to kidnap a six-year-old girl and molest her. Well, a band of monkeys came, piled on top of him and saved that little girl. And so, again, don't think God's not going to use what needs to be done to take care of his business. Amen. So, in the bottom line of this, God is speaking, revealing everything to us as fast as we can receive it, as fast as we can discern it, and then we can put it to work for his glory and our good. But keep the balance, always keep the balance, but also be continually to ready to hear and see what the Lord is uncovering for Amen. us to know. Anything to add nope. to? Okay. It's great. So it's okay to see the signs of heaven and earth that pertain to where we are in these last days. And eschatology buffs will wear you out with it. No offense, but I wear one too. So I don't I don't follow that anymore just because I'm hearing the Lord more clearly now than ever. First and foremost, we have God's word. We have his mm -hmm. spirit speaking to us. Uh, his voice is speaking over us according to Psalms 29. But if the Lord is granting us revelation in our personal matters or the answers that we seek, he will confirm and bear witness through people, songs, phrases, and creation itself. Mm -hmm. uh, a couple of songs, you know, you wake up to a song that's been playing in your mind, and it's like, where did that come from? Well, just, just consider it. And if another one comes to mind, it kind of has the same theme. Hmm, there's a pattern here. I might ought to pay attention to it. So, I don't, I don't, I'm one who doesn't personally believe we should go hunting for or running after signs and wonders. You know, what's happening at this meeting? What's happening at this one? Uh, let God, let God call you to it. Amen. But let, let God bring it to you. Amen. So there was a time when Jeff and I first got married that I, I was raised Baptist and I love my Baptist roots because they taught me how to serve. They taught me how to love people Both and, um, gave me an amazing foundation in who God is and, um, in my identity in him. But Thank when you. I met Jeff and just kind of like a different layer peeled as far as, um, you know, the signs and wonders and the miraculous side of God that I just wasn't familiar with. I started, I was like, Hey, can we go to this meeting? Hey, can we go to this? And nothing would ever happen. They're like, oh, usually at my meetings, this, this, and this happens. And nothing, would, and nothing would ever happen when we were at these meetings. And so finally I was like, God, what's up? I just want to see you. And he said, Jaron, you know me, you don't need you know, this to show you who I am. And it just caught me, um, it just, what is it, grounded me. Yeah. 
it just tethered me to the ground so tightly to the fact that I didn't need a human to tell me who God was because God was like, you hear from me. You know who I am. Yeah. And so it was just, it was just. I've funny. fallen out in the spirit so many times I've lost count. What's God speaking to you during those times? How are you changed? What? Yeah. Yeah. He's not going to make you a spiritual junkie. Okie doke. It's true. Yeah. Uh, anyway, it's, it's okay to, to pay attention to signs. And matter of fact, I'm, I'm reinforcing. Pay attention to signs. Pay attention to your dreams. Not every dream is from heaven, but there is a message in there. And the Lord even, uh, Joseph had said, when, when in speaking and in, in interpreting dreams, if, if, a matter, if you dream a matter once, and this is my version, if you dream a matter once, consider it, pray, for it, pray over it. If you dream it twice, it's, it's set. It's from God mm -hmm. and it's set. And so I got laughed at in a meeting from, because I said, uh, where'd you get that? Genesis. <laughs> but, but then there's also those, and the Lord also warns of, of, of dreamers who, you know, I have dreamed a dream. And, and some people you'll, you'll come across when they say, I dreamed a dream. And the other night in the dream, and, and they act as though that that, was, that is the set word of the Lord when it is not. So be careful. Be discerning. Lord, give us your mind. Give us your eyes. Give us your heart. It's still all about pursuing him. It is. It is always about him. Oh, yeah, because this is his. This is his. So our, our quote to finish up here, uh, and I love this, uh, Paulo Coelho. He's a Brazilian lyricist, writer, and, and he is a, he's a brother in the face. In order to arrive, you must follow the signs. God inscribed on the world the path that each man must follow. It's just a matter of reading the inscription he wrote for you. Amen, Amen. to that. Amen. And as always, we never like to leave without a blessing, baby. You, you done? Yeah, I just want to encourage each of you to the fact of you hear from the Lord and you pursue him, and you chase him, he is never going to lead you astray. His word will not return void. Um, real quick, so we were, there was a meeting at work this week, a, a conference, and one of the statements in this conference, one of the speakers made, really talked about to the sowing and reaping aspect of things. And they said, do not sow a seed. There aren't going to be some seeds that fall by the yeah. wayside. There, anyway, if, go for uh, it. If, and he taught out of the parable of the sower, of course. But, you know, some, some, of the birds, some of the birds pick up. Don't go chasing after the birds, okay? Let God take care of that. Mm -hmm. that those that fall on the wayside and are scorched by the sun, don't be concerned with it because it's going to happen. Uh, and those type of things. Those that spring up and, and die, okay, that's not yours to take care of. That is the Lord's to take mm -hmm. care of. And it, and it was very, very powerful. And I think the thing I took away from it the most was the fact of do not get dismayed and do not get disheartened with the seed that you're sowing if you mm -hmm. do not see the effects or the outcomes that you want to see. Right. You know, if you're expecting your seed to bring about a certain thing, that is not the pursuit of sowing and reaping. The mm -hmm. pursuit of sowing and reaping is obedience. God tells you where to sow and you sow. You never know what the harvest is going to yeah. reap, but do not get dismayed and do not get disheartened in your sowing. Right. Um, or in well, your I'm not going to give to them because they're bad ground. Did God tell you to give to them? Yes. Mm -hmm. Then you might ought to do that. It's all about so him. It's a be obedience. Okay. Amen. Numbers chapter six, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and he give you his peace. Amen. And because his name is upon us, we are blessed. New Testament blessing. May the grace of the Lord Jesus, the love of the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verses 1 through 14. We speak this over ourselves and over our family every day. And it shall come to pass, if you shall hearken diligently to the, unto the voice of the Lord your God, to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command you this day, that the Lord your God will set you high above all nations. And all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you, if you shall hearken to the voice of the Lord your God. Blessed shall you be in the city. Blessed shall you be in the field. Blessed shall be the fruit of your body and the fruit of your ground mm -hmm. and the fruit of your cattle, the increase of your kind and the flocks of your sheep. Blessed shall be your basket and your store. Blessed shall you be when you come in. Blessed shall you be when you go out. The Lord shall cause his enemies that rise up against you to be smitten before your face. 
They shall come out against you one way and flee before you seven ways. The Lord shall command the blessing upon you in your storehouses and in all that you set your hand unto. And he shall bless you in the land which the Lord your God has given you. Don't let go of your land promises. Amen. The Lord shall establish you a holy people unto himself. And he, as he has sworn to keep to, and as he has sworn to you, and if you shall keep the commandments of the Lord your God and walk in his ways, and all the people of the earth shall see that you are called by the name of the Lord, and they shall be afraid of you. And the Lord shall make you plenteous in goods, and the fruit of your body, and the fruit of your cattle, and in the fruit of your ground, and the land which the Lord swear to your fathers to give you. The Lord shall open to you his good treasure, mm -hmm. the heaven to give the rain unto your land in its season, and to bless all the work of your hands. And you shall lend to many nations, and you shall not borrow. And the Lord shall make you the head and not the tail, and you shall be above only, and you shall not be beneath. And if that, and if you will hearken to the commandments of the Lord your God, which have been commanded to you to observe and to do them, you shall not go aside from any of the words which has been spoken to you, to the right nor to the left, mm -hmm. to go after the gods of this world. That right there. I mean, that wraps it all up. So anytime you ask somebody, hey, how are you? Oh, I'm blessed and highly favored. I know that the word says so. I want to know how you're doing personally. Well, I'm blessed and highly favored. Good enough. We're done. So anyway, I'm sorry. It's a personal deal on my part. But, and from Jaron and I personally, may the wealth and riches of heaven and earth be poured upon you in their fullness. And may the vaults and treasuries of heaven and earth be open for you mm -hmm. and always be made available to you. Amen and amen. Amen. Anything else, love? Nope. All righty. Fam, thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. Those of you who have joined us live, thank you. Those who will join us on replay and catch up, thank you. Now we get to go to church ourselves. <laughs> so we love you. Many, many blessings. And may every day be your best day.